Uh, sure, I'm David Schwartz. I'm the CTO at Ripple. I guess I'm working on all things related to the XRP ledger and Ripple's business strategy, and of course, right now, focusing on the launch of the AMM feature. Perfect. Great to have you, David. Uh, Legato, why don't you go next? Yeah, hello, I'm Legato. I'm a lead developer at Dockster Finance. Uh, we're building the UI for AMM and uh, trading on XRPL in general. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks, Legato. Uh, and Jason. Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, this is Jason here, head of DeFi at Axler. Axler is a leading interoperability solution. We pride ourselves on you know being fully decentralized. Um, Axler supports 60 chains today, and we have both asset transfers as well as message passing. Perfect, welcome. And so great to have the three of you here. Uh, so as many of you know, the AMM has been a significant development for the XRP Ledger. Uh, and after over two years uh, of hard work, it finally went live on XRPL mainnet this past Friday. Uh, so this represents a milestone, the evolution of XRPL, uh, aiming to really build out a, a financial foundation um, specifically for liquidity and, and trading and create new opportunities and utility for, for users on the chain. Uh, so as you all know, with any new technology, uh, you know, you, you hit you hit bumps in the road as we did uh, earlier uh, last week. So an AMM bug was identified, as many of you know. Uh, but big thanks to RX Engineering, as well as um, community members such as Orchestra and Teku. Uh, a fix has now been identified and is going through reviews. Uh, so this will ultimately need to go through the amendment voting process to go live. Uh, but a huge amount of progress has, has gone on over the weekend. So big shout out to everyone that was involved in that. Um, we recognize that no system is perfect, even with the most rigorous testing, code reviews, audits, bugs can and, and will still arise. So I, I think the recent events have really shown the strength and resilience of the XRPL community in coming together to quickly identify the issue and work towards uh, a resolution that, that meets the needs to all members involved. Uh, so during this spaces discussion, we'll want to provide some clarity on these recent events. Uh, we'll also dive into the key capabilities of the AMM itself how they enhance DeFi functionality on the ledger. Um, and we've invited key, key representatives from projects uh, to share their perspectives on these use cases. Um, we're enabling with the AMM and how it will unlock new possibilities for developers and users. So with that, why don't we jump right in? The first question is for David Schwartz. Uh, for those still learning about this feature, can you please explain the significance of the AMM integration for the XRP ledger and how it enhances its DeFi capabilities? Sure. Um, so in um, traditional finance, there's market makers of all kinds for, for equities like stocks, for foreign, for foreign exchange. And this provides liquidity, essentially allowing people who want to buy a stock or sell a stock or trade one asset for another to do so whenever they want to. The market maker is always willing to buy and sell the asset that they make markets for. And that ensures that there's liquidity for anyone who needs it without somebody else having to specifically like interact to make take the other side of that trade. So again, it's an automated market maker, so it provides liquidity at all times. It doesn't require um, somebody to actually place a specific order in an order book. So we currently have liquidity on the XRP ledger before the automated market maker feature in order books, but somebody actually had to place those offers actively at all times. And so there might not be liquidity when you wanted it. The automated market maker will provide liquidity at all times. And there's no need to create smart contracts or any of the risks associated with that because it will be a core XRP ledger feature. Once it's working and proven reliable, everybody who's interacting with that feature will know exactly what that feature does and they don't have to worry about a smart contract possibly having some features that they they didn't expect. Because it is a core ledger feature and integrates with the DEX, that means that all the liquidity is sort of in one place on the ledger. So it's not spread out in different places where you might like in you know, some other ecosystems that liquidity is spread out in any number of different places and it's kind of hard to aggregate it all. It's aggregated on the XRP ledger because the, the DEX is a core feature, the AMM is a core feature. And it also takes advantage of um, the XRP ledger sort of native features. A lot of the what we expect to be advantages of the AMM implementation on the XRP ledger come from the XRP ledger's features that it already has. For example, transactions are very quick, they're very cheap, and it has very high throughput. And those advantages are particularly important with, uh, with any kind of trading functions or liquidity functions like the AMM because prices move fairly quickly so people don't have to worry about their transactions sort of being in flux for long periods of time when markets might move against them. And of course, the lower fees mean that it's cheaper for everybody to use. 
Thanks, David. Yeah, that's a really helpful overview. And we're going to double click on a couple of those those features and advantages later in the, the spaces. Uh, but for now, uh, I'd love to answer what's probably a burning question for a lot of folks on the line. Could you share details of the recently identified issue uh, affecting the AMM? I know there were a couple misconceptions um, that the bug is caused by single sided deposits functionality. What can you really tell us about about what's going on with the issue? So it looks like the issue doesn't really have anything to do with the single sided deposit functionality. The issue that caused us uh, that, that we consider a bug affects the integration of the order books in the DEX payment engine and the AMM. Uh, it's, it appears to affect like complex payment path scenarios where the behavior is not what's expected and can result in uh, operations that the AMM should not allow to happen. Single-sided deposits um, are a sort of easy way for a user to put funds into a pool and get liquidity tokens, uh, liquidity provider tokens. But if the pool doesn't have a lot of liquidity, there can be a price impact because you're, tra you're sort of trading against the pool and you could sort of push the pool out of balance. I think that will be less an issue once the pools get larger and have more liquidity. But in early days, it's a kind of dangerous to use the single-sided deposit functionality because you are... Uh, pushing the pool out of balance. You know, if you're depositing a very small amount of funds into a very large pool, it's going to be negligible, a tiny fraction of a percent. But if you're depositing a larger amount or into a smaller pool, the price can move against you. Uh, the user interfaces do provide a warning, um, and, mo and if they don't, they, sh they certainly should. They, they may call it slippage, but you might not notice. You might just see a box and just click OK without really thinking about the implication. You should definitely consider the price impact before submitting a uh, single sided deposit and front end app should definitely warn users clearly if they currently don't. Thanks, David. That's that's really helpful. Uh, so I guess two two parts to my next question. The first is is for you and the second will be for Legato from Orchestra. Uh, on the first part, what steps have been taken to address this issue from a Ripple D from a core ledger perspective? Uh, how will the proposed fix be implemented and ultimately go through the amendment voting process? Well, we have what we believe is a fix for the issue. We're going to spend some time just to make absolutely sure that we've, you know, crossed our T's, dotted our I's, got everything right. Um, it should address the problem with how liquidity routes through the order books and ensure transactions execute as intended. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to take a couple of steps. Obviously, we have to be very confident that the fix actually fixes the problem, doesn't introduce new ones, that it's a complete fix, and so on. Um, Code will have to be released, and um, then there'll have to be an amendment voting process, which will take two weeks. Validators will review the amendment and cast their votes to support or reject it. And there'll also have to be enough time for the servers to upgrade to the version of the software that has the fix. Um, but once that happens, the problem will be fixed on the network. Perfect. Yeah, that's great news. I'm very glad uh, we were able to turn something around, around so quickly. So that's great. Uh, and over to Legato from Orchestra, can you speak a little bit to the developer perspective, others building user interfaces, as well as the user perspective um, uh, on what are best next steps in the meantime? Yeah, uh, so in the meantime, uh, Orchestra disabled the uh, deposit page and uh, we advise users to withdraw liquidity just in case. Uh, so also we made sure that none of the payment transactions coming from Orchestra contribute to the issue. Uh, also, users should be careful when swapping. Uh, for example, if uh, they see a high price impact warning, uh, they should reconsider. Uh, it, it would be a, a silly thing to do, even if <laughs> there was no bug, but uh, uh, I guess with, uh, you don't want to affect the pools uh, right now too much. Uh, just in case uh, something happening with the payment transactions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so basically, the general advice for now is to not deposit new funds into AMM uh, and uh, possibly it's best to withdraw your current liquidity while the issue is being fixed. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thanks, Legato. So I've heard from both David as well as Legato, if you see red text, watch out for price impact. Uh, it's advisable to, to listen to that warning message. So I think that's loud and clear. Um, I guess back to David, we can shift gears uh, and talk a little bit more about the AM, AMM capabilities and some of the neat features uh, that it brings to the market. Uh, so we've touched a little bit on single-sided deposits and we'll go in more there later. But for now, could you tell us a little bit about some of the other unique features that the XLS30 AMM offers? 
Sure. I, I think there are a couple of big ones. So one of them is the continuous auction mechanism. This is a mechanism to try to reduce impermanent loss. Um, and what it does is it allows arbitragers to essentially bid for a trading execution discount. Effectively, what happens is AMMs always take losses due to arbitragers. It's a, it, it, the pool can't function if people don't arbitrage against it. They're beneficial to the, to the pool, but they also take some funds away from it. And so to recapture some of those losses, essentially people bid for, their ARP for sort of X trade execution privileges. And that's revenue to the pool in the form of a destruction of liquidity tokens, which will increase the value of the existing tokens. There's also integration with the order book decks that the that the ledger has, um, which allows um, existing payment transactions to use both order book liquidity and dex liquidity, and it allows payments to sort of uh, rebalance the dex, which allows its trading strategy of volatility harvesting to function. So uh, payments will use uh, AMMs, they'll use orders on the order book or both, and combine them in single transactions to get the best rate. And then, of course, there's the LP tokens and their governance mechanism, which represents sort of shares of the pool serving as proof of ownership, but they also give holders voting rights on parameters of the automated market maker, such as trading fees. Yeah, that's great. M makes a lot of sense. So I'd love to just double click on the Clobdex integration. I know you mentioned that. Anything else you could share on the synergies between the AMM and, and the Clobdex? Uh, how is that different from what's in the market? Today, what, what are the real advantages for traders that, that this creates? Uh, and then the second piece, could you potentially clear some mis misconceptions about how this relates or, or doesn't re relate to single-sided deposits? I think the two features work together really well, the AMM and the order book decks and the way they're integrated. AMMs are, are not super capital efficient but they're always available and they implement a trading strategy for liquidity providers. And order books can be very capital efficient, but they rely on somebody to be placing orders into those books. So if you have an asset that's not as popular, there may not be enough people placing orders, but if you have the most popular assets, the orders can be very capital efficient. So the two of them together give you two sources of liquidity and you can, it, it, it's, a, it's strictly a sort of an, right? You use the one that's best and you can combine both of them. So it's a pure benefit to people who are executing payments and trying to trade. So that allows smart order routing and price optimization. You know, the pathfinding will look at both the AMM pools and the order book. But it's important to understand that the integration is for payments. Single-sided deposits don't use the DEX. Single-sided deposits only trade against the AMM. So that, that's a type of integration that doesn't currently exist. So that's, that's a limitation that people should understand if they do single-sided deposits, that they are strictly using AMM liquidity, and there may not be enough liquidity to make that capital efficient. Thanks, David. Yeah, really, really helpful and definitely excited about, you know, once once everything's up and running and working properly to bring this uh, new innovated, n new and innovative, you know, two sided AMM to the market. I think it's going to make make a lot of waves and, and help a lot of users. So very excited for that. Next question is for Legato from Orchestra. Uh, how will the AMM integration impact the utility for developers uh, working on the XRP ledger? Yeah, we believe uh, that uh, AMM provides like a simpler way to handle liquidity uh, on XRPL. Uh, since uh, liquidity is common on the whole uh, XRPL chain, uh, there is no need to like uh, projects to fight for own liquidity. Like on other chains, uh, liquidity is kind of segmented into different projects, uh, so you can kind of uh, trade across all the liquidity pools for like some certain assets between different projects. Um, yeah, so, and this, since uh, liquidity is concentrated, it uh, positively reflects on the price impact. Uh, so, like, hopefully, like, if the pool is large and not, not uh, segmented between different projects, then uh, on the big liquidity pool, the price impact should be minimized. Uh, for developers, it is nice to have, like, a unified way of handling various aspects of trading on blockchain, um, be it liquidity provision or token discoverability or arbitrage trading uh, analytics. Uh, so it's nice to have like a unified uh, API to work with the uh, AMM and uh, order book. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, Legato. Uh, so thank you, Jason, for waiting patiently. Uh, we'll shift over and, and bring Axelar into the discussion. 
Uh, Jason, could you tell us uh, a few details as to what this integration with the XRP Ledger looks like and what it will bring to the ecosystem? Yeah, absolutely. You know, from Axel's point of view, we believe this is going to be an absolute game changer for Ripple and XRPL because, you know, this will be the first interoperability solution that is going to connect over 60 chains. Axler today supports both all of the major EVM chains, such as Ethereum, Arbitrum, Base, and so on, as well as all the Cosmos IBC chains. On our roadmap, we also have Solana and Sui uh, to be live in Q2. You know, what this means for XRPL is that you know, users will be able to transfer liquidity, all of the major assets onto XRPL from any of these chains in a very seamless and secure way. Um, you know, for developers, we all, with Axler's message passing capabilities, they'll be able to pass any payload, call contracts across any of these chains that Axler supports on the network as well. What that concretely means is that there will be all kinds of new cross-chain applications that will arrive on the XRPL, and developers, XRPL developers, will also be able to make their existing applications cross-chain. Right? These things could range from like cross-chain swaps, cross-chain lending, omni-chain name services, NFT bridging, just to name a few. As like a formal Rippler myself, I you know I know th the strength of Ripple and some of the challenges. I think by having this kind of next gen interoperability, it's going to open XRPL to all kinds of new exciting opportunities. Yeah, definitely, really, really excited for some of those features to be unlocked. Uh, so I guess looking at it on the flip side, what is the impact of this interoperability and bridging uh, with other chains from other chains' perspective? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think if you look at crypto right now, there's a ton of liquidity on, on the other chains, right? That's always shifting very quickly. And I think from my point of view is as interoperability solutions get better, they're essentially like the highways that connect to all of the different blockchains. If these blockchains are like cities, the, the better the highway that you have and the more interconnected that you are, the more easily liquidity and users will onboard to, to this chain, right? And today, XRPL isn't super well connected. So I think when Axler connection goes live, you'll see an influx of a ton of users coming on chain to XRPL and hopefully a ton of liquidity that comes with it. Like our vision is that we can make XRPL the leading hub for real world assets and stablecoin, given Ripple's unique advantages with the regulatory clarity and all of the relationships that it's built with financial institutions and enterprises over the years. Yeah, could, couldn't agree more. Um, thanks for explaining that, Jason. Uh, so I guess opening up to all three of you, maybe we can start with David, uh, then Jason, then Orchestra. What, what use cases are you excited about that touch the AMM index? Are there any new use cases that weren't previously po possible that you're particularly excited about bringing to the market? David, why don't you kick off? Well, personally, I'm most excited about something that previously was just not possible in the XRPL ecosystem, which is the ability to contribute assets to a pool that executes a trading strategy and reaps trading fees that liquidity providers get a share of. And that's the most exciting to me just because the XRPL ecosystem just didn't have anything like that before. Yeah, that's definitely a big one. Jason, um, you next. Anything in particular you're excited about that the AMM will unlock for users? Yeah, absolutely. Right. As an interoperability provider, we often work hand in hand with AMMs because, you know, you have to have all kinds of assets available. And many of the times they are bridged assets available on an AMM. So we'll be able to work very closely with the Ripple team to see, you know, what assets uh, the team wants to be available on the AMM, bridge it natively from all of those chains so we can create more of like a centralized exchange experience on chain f for users. And, you know, the second component of this will be we'll be able to help bring on more liquidity. And, of course, a good AMM is only as good as, you know, the, liquid, the amount of liquidity it has. So we're excited to, you know, partner closely with Ripple and Orchestra in these efforts. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And, and just to underscore what you said, Jason, uh, I mean, between the combination of the two deck systems to support any liquidity environment, the influx of new assets through Orchestra, we're really setting the stage to become somewhat of a, a liquidity hub or a central DEX across all of crypto, um, especially with, you know, fast transactions, low fees. So uh, very excited about, um, you know, that future state once everything is, is fully up and running. Um, so lastly, over to, to Orchestra, would love to hear from you, Legata. What are you particularly excited from a use case perspective, either uh, right at launch or even in the future with the AMM? Yeah, uh, 
you can think that uh, from the project perspective, like if uh, there's a small project that has a token on XRPL, uh, previously they had to kind of manage the market making via order book, which is like time consuming and like very involved. Now they can just create a AMM pool and kind of take the burden off their shoulders uh, when it comes to market making. Um, yeah, as well as uh, arbitrage traders now uh, have AMM to to use as uh, like uh, one reference uh, for their trading, uh, and maybe even like eight uh, in arbitraging with a continuous auction mechanism. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for sharing, Legato. Uh, and I guess to keep keep it with you, you know, a follow up question: How do you really see the AMM integration impacting the broader DeFi landscape and the competitiveness competitiveness of the XRPL? I know you've been you know, knee deep in DeFi um, and DEXs for a long time, so would love to hear your perspective. Yeah, well, well, I think AMM certainly makes the XRPL more attractive for users who maybe haven't used uh, XRPL before. So now maybe they might be interested to take a look at uh, what's happening over here. Uh, usually AMM is kind of at the heart of the DeFi because it facilitates trading. So I think we can expect in the future there could be more projects that building different DeFi application on top of uh, AMM liquidity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely agree. That makes sense. And Jason, anything from your side? <laughs> Yeah, I would just say I second what uh, or what they just said. You know, like a DEX is really a critical building block in a thriving DeFi ecosystem. It's really the f you know usually the first application that launches of any new blockchain. And you know, as soon as you have like a DEX with strong liquidity, it unlocks all kinds of new opportunities, right? Because now you, uh, developers can launch their own projects, they can launch their own, own tokens. It's it's just the beginning of of everything in DeFi. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I guess over to to David, how do you envision the AMM integration attracting more developers? You've obviously been, um, you know, behind the XRP ledger for over over a decade now. How do you imagine this new new feature will attract more developers and projects to build on the XRPL? I think there are some intangible ways that, you know, technological progress always uh, makes people interested, you know, in, a, in a, the type of ecosystem and the type of uh, industry that we're in. People are always attracted to ideas that are new and that, you know, that are, that are clever. And I think things like the continuous auction mechanism and the integration without smart contracts are sort of going to attract people in intangible ways. But I think there are three, like, tangible ways in which the AMM um, will contribute to interest from developers and other projects. So one of them is that users are really attracted to the idea of, of being liquidity providers. And you can't really bring people onto a platform unless there's something for those people to do. So the more things that people can do that are interesting, the more interesting the platform is to users. And I think the ability to provide liquidity is going to be a big draw. Also, if projects involve launching their own tokens, it's very difficult to make a token liquid. Like on the order books, you would have to place offers. And if the price of the token is volatile, then someone has to maintain those offers. It becomes a very active thing to do. Whereas if you can just create an AMM and just put some funds into it, it'll be much easier to have your token be liquid. And a liquid token is much easier to to buy, to sell, to use for payments. And I think the last one is that uh, more aggressive arbitrage will, will improve um, sort of the, it'll bring spreads down and it will be, it'll be a source of revenue for people who, who can arbitrage efficiently. And I think that's just, just a huge win. The sort of lack of arbitrage activity uh, because it was so difficult to do in the past, um, I think has been sort of limiting the growth of the ecosystem. And so the AMM trade, the AMM, for example, rely on being arbitraged aggressively against, they charge for that service. So if there's, if there's competition to do it, that will mean revenue for the pool directly, but also it will make the pools trading more efficient. So I think that's going to draw people on both sides, people who are attracted because they want to take advantage of those opportunities and people who find the ecosystem more interesting and compelling because those spreads are tighter and that like, those liquidity pools are deeper. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. That that makes a lot of sense. Anything uh, from your perspective, Legato, I know you've shared a couple of, of views around attracting developers, but anything else in particular? Um, you know, I think arbitrage, as, as David mentioned, will stand out, especially with the AMM bid feature. Anything else from your perspective that you think will attract developers? Yeah, I, I think uh, the first thing that uh, might attract developers is to like see the active use of the AMM uh, in the first place. Uh, so I think it's more about like educating users uh, and like uh, 
making users uh, uh, utilize AMM for their advantage. Uh, but I would say that the first thing every member of XRPL community needs to do, no matter if developer or not, is to uh, research what AMM is and how to use it. This will help you to avoid uh, costly mistakes and therefore it will contribute to the success of the AMM. Uh, also, if you want to practice, uh, there's still DevNet uh, available. Uh, we have a link to it on the website. If you want to play around on DevNet without using real funds. Yeah, we will also provide the guides in the social media about some maybe more difficult topics in the AMM. And uh, once you're confident with your AMM knowledge, you can like help others uh, who might have questions uh, in Twitter or Discord. Yeah, and uh, if you are a liquidity provider, uh, please participate in trading fee voting. Uh, it is important to keep it fair because uh, uh, yeah, if, if fees are high, uh, obviously the trading volume will be low. So I uh, need to kind of keep it fair uh, depending on the market conditions. Yeah, those are great points. Thanks a lot, Legato. And that's something that, you know, saying this with the community here will be a great exercise for all of us to get right is as we launch new features that we're all tapping into, whether it's, um, you know, the fact that you have the opportunity to vote on fees or the fact that you can do single-sided deposit, but there are some consequences kind of coming together at a com as a community, ensuring that everyone is educated on what these new features are, how they can um, should and, and should not be used. That's a really good point, um, Legato. So looking forward to, to more materials on that. So uh, zooming out a little bit, I, I'll turn it to David. Uh, how does the AMM integration align with Ripple's vision for the future of finance and the role of the XRP ledger in this? Well, we've envisioned a future where financial services are inclusive, accessible, efficient, and blockchain technology and digital assets are key to us getting to that future. We've been fostering innovation, collaboration, and interoperability, and we believe AMM integration contributes to that goal of creating a more connected and efficient global financial system. By building features onto the XRP ledger, they're immediately available to pretty much everyone everywhere who has an you know who has an internet connection. Um, being able to you know contribute to providing liquidity and participate in ways that traditionally you know most people haven't been able to participate. Is, de is definitely a key part to that future finance vision. Yeah, that, that's great. So do you think traditional finance institutions will adopt this technology or how far out are we from this adoption happening? Well, you know, AMMs do offer advantages that are attractive to financial institutions, you know, automatic provision of, li of liquidity, reduced counterparty risk, ability to earn returns sort of in a passive way. Uh, regulatory clarity is definitely, you know, important, and it's been improving around DeFi and infrastructure has been developing. So I do see that world where financial institutions, you know, additionally in areas that have more regulatory clarity, and then gradually, you know, coming to areas where regulatory environment is more uncertain, they will be able to leverage AMMs and other DeFi features. One of the things that we've been looking at is how we can add features like the decentralized identity, the DID feature on the XRP ledger is a good example of a feature that helps to open up more opportunities that might be foreclosed by regulatory restrictions without turning, you know, we don't want to turn the XRP ledger into a permission blockchain. We don't want to turn it into a rule, into a place that's, you know, governed by some legal system. We want it to be decentralized. We want it to be open to people all around the world, but we also want people who do have to comply with regulations to be able to use it. And it's a delicate balance and features like decentralized identity um, help to sort of bridge that. They're opt-in features. They don't take away anybody's ability to access um, the XRP ledger. And so we're hoping that traditional financial institutions will be able to have enough of those types of features that they will be able to use, you know, layer one blockchains like the XRP ledger and features like the automated market maker. Uh, hard to predict the future, though. A big, a big part of that is going to be, you know, how, how, uh, what kind of regulatory clarity we're able to get and where we get it, which is very difficult to predict. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. It's a tough balancing act of meeting somewhere in the middle where uh, we can bring this valuable tech to them and we can also meet the regulatory, um, you know, compliance requirements that they have. So very excited to make progress on that front. Um, and I'd also love to hear, Jason, your perspective. I know I've seen a lot of uh, headlines of Axelar doing exciting things with various financial institutions that seems to represent some sort of connection between FIs and decentralized finance. 
What are your thoughts on traditional financial institutions and how they'll adopt this technology and, and how far out we really are? Yeah, for sure. You know, we're working very closely with many leading financial institutions, such as, you know, JP Morgan and MasterCard and so on. And what we're seeing is, you know, they're all taking various different approaches. Some of them are building on their own private blockchain. Some of them are launching on, you know, like L2 uh, rollups uh, or, you know, other like, you know, Cosmos stacks and so on. I think everyone will have a different strategy on how they approach blockchain. But one thing is for sure is that they are all, everyone will gear towards moving towards like a, a single liquidity hub, right? And I think, as mentioned earlier, that XRPL and Ripple is really well positioned to become the main liquidity hub for stable coins and, and real world assets. And from Axler's point of view, we're just really excited to help bridge a lot of these assets and connect with these uh, private and public chains so that they can easily onboard and access the XRPL. You know, as for the community, I think, as we've seen, right, it's not an easy feat launching a new AM. Be, the best thing that everyone can do is try it out, provide feedback, and also when ready, pro, you know, provide liquidity to bootstrap the AMM. Only when like the AMM is is the most liquid and most capital efficient will like other enterprise financial institutions want to uh, use this AMM and, and bridge over their assets. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and yeah, exciting, exciting road ahead. Uh, so question for both orchestra as well as Axelar. Uh, and I know we've touched on this in a few different ways, so maybe I'll add some constraints around it. How can the community contribute to this growth and the success of AMMs on the XRP ledger? Perhaps we can give two ways from, from each person that you think are the most important. Obviously, there's a lot of things people can do. Um, so Legata, why don't you kick off? What would you say are the two most important ways that the community can contribute to the growth and the success of AMMs on the XRP ledger? Um, yeah, I, I think I, I've touched on it uh, previously. Uh, I think like for community uh, to kind of lead the road to success, uh, first of all, yeah, be sure like you need to, you know what to to do with AMM, like research what it does, how to use it, and uh, yeah, don't uh, don't make uh, costly mistakes. Uh, for example, pay attention to like price impact warnings and stuff like that, uh, and maybe try the DevNet if you're not sure. Yeah, um, yeah, and just be more aware like uh, how it works. Because uh, I think ultimately uh, we want uh, people to do like wise financial decisions on the AMM and. Uh, Success will come if uh, people kind of have benefit from using the AMM. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and from your side, Jason? Yeah, I'd say just in addition to trying out the AMM and, and adding liquidity, um, you know, when Axler finally supports XRPL, one of the products we have is called Interchain Token Service, and it's a code free. A tokenization and, and bridging solution where like anyone can go to the portal, create their own token, uh, and this token would not only exist on XRPL, but also any of the other chains supported by Axler. So I think if the community wants to create a token on XRPL and, and then list it on AM and having more diversity of assets to be traded could also be um, super interesting and a, and a strong value add. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Jason. So back to you, David, um, can you share a little bit on what steps are being taken to educate and onboard developers and users to take advantage of the AMM functionality on XRPL? Um, sure. There's a range of educational content, articles, blog posts, videos to explain, you know, the concept of an AMM, some of the benefits and use cases. Um, my next podcast episode on Blockstars is going to focus on the AMM feature. And we're looking forward to seeing more partnerships, wallets, exchanges, DeFi platforms, you know, user interfaces, things that promote integration and adoption of the XRP Ledger's AMM functionality. And of course, Apex in Amsterdam this June, you know, come join us and I'm sure the AMM will be talked about extensively. Thanks, David. Yeah, Apex is definitely something we're all uh, looking forward to this year. A lot to talk about, a lot to cover there. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps everything that, that uh, we've gone through. would love to just open it up to uh, orchestra uh, as well as Jason. Anything else on your mind about the AMM? Anything else that you'd like to share with the community? Maybe I'll start with you, Legato. Yeah, uh, 
If you want to know more uh, about uh, AMM, uh, we have a Discord. You can join and uh, ask questions so if there's something is, that is not clear or you want to give feedback uh, about UI or AMM functionality in general. Yeah, we're happy to, to answer questions and listen. Yeah, and uh, hope you enjoy using the AMM. Perfect. Thanks, Agato. Jason, uh, over to you. Anything else you haven't mentioned? Anything else on your mind that you'd like to share with everyone? Yeah, I would say, you know, this is really the beginning uh, of, a, of a journey, right? DEXs are constantly evolving, and there's lots of new innovations to be seen. You know, we're working very close with many other DEXs on implementing, like, cross-chain swaps, which can use existing, like, AMM liquidity to uh, simplify the user experience so users can swap, like, any asset, any asset across different chains in a single click. And there's also lots of interesting cross-experiments done on, like, you know, intent-based AMMs and, and DEXs. So... I think my final word would be this is just the beginning and there's still lots of exciting things ahead. Thanks, Jason. Uh, David, anything on your side? Anything else you'd like to share with the community? I guess one thing that I didn't mention is that I am pretty excited to see what the bridged assets from XLR will open up. You know, one of the problems with having, you know, you have a great DEX and you have the great AMM feature, but, you know, you don't have a lot of great assets for people to hold and trade. And so I'm excited to see what, what the bridged assets are going to bring to the ecosystem. Yes, definitely share that one as well. Uh, great. Well, I think that's a wrap. Thank you, everyone on the panel for joining us, as well as everyone in, in the XRPL community for supporting uh, during this the, these recent events. While unfortunate, it's really been uh, incredible to watch everyone come together and, and solve these problems together. Um, please follow Ripple X Dev for any future updates on the AMM, along with some of the other resources mentioned by speakers. Uh, so that's all. Thanks, everyone.